The Johnson Wax Program. Presenting Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly. Ted Weems and his orchestra open the show with Shall We Dance? Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, why they prefer this particular floor polish, you might get three different answers. The first housewife might say, well, I like Johnson's glow coat because it's so easy to use. I don't have to do any rubbing or buffing. Housewife number two might say, glow coat keeps my linoleum looking like new, protects it so it can't get worn or soiled. I figure it saves me money and work. The third housewife might put it this way, I'm enthusiastic about Johnson's glow coat because it goes on in such a hurry takes only 20 minutes to dry, and it makes my floors more beautiful than ever before. Now, if you haven't already tried this easy-to-use liquid polish, buy Glow Coat from your dealer tomorrow. Look for the attractive yellow can with the lettering G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. Oh, yes, remember, you save money on the larger sizes. Fibber has promoted himself into the management of a food shop, against Molly's better judgment, as usual. And here in the food shop at 14th and Oak Streets, talking to the proprietor, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, don't you worry about a thing, Mr. Schmearcase. We'll take care of everything. Yes. McGee can run the shop and I'll handle the bookkeeping, Mr. Schmearcase. That's good. You know, it's a load off the mind to just get away and relax. Mm -hmm. The food business is a good business, generally, and I wouldn't wish a thumb cough to monkey with the profits and losers, so I'm nicht knowing which is which. Verstehen? <laughs> oh, sure, we're staying right here. <laughs> Don't you give the store a thought, Smeary. I'm an old-timer at the food business. You're telling me. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I used to run a whole string of jam and java joints up in Pocatello. Provision McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, my. Provision McGee, the peppy personality, proprietor of premier produce places, providing pleased people of Pocatello the prettiest peaches, proudest peanuts, particularly palatable party pastries, and promoting poetic pies from Pocatello to Panama. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm leaving the place in your hand. Fine. Goodbye, good luck, and don't tell the moth boil for tabioca. <laughs> well, McGee, you're it again. I think this is the most ridiculous undertaking you've undertook yet. You'll be sorry you says that, Mrs. McGee, when the money starts rolling in. Paper money don't roll, McGee. No, but it doubles. <laughs> Did you get it, Molly? You says paper money don't roll, and I say no. Ain't funny, McGee. Uh oh Really? <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> you know, Molly, that old fossil don't really know what the food game is all about. Oh, no? No. Well, he's managed to stay in business on this corner for 20 years. Yeah, but he'll never make a go of it. <laughs> what people want these days is health food. What? People are calorie conscious. Why, shucks, every kid in the kindergarten now can tell you how many vitamins there are in a caraway seed. I'm going to specialize in health food. Oh, now, McGee, please. I'm going to paint a sign to hang up out in front, so... Uh-oh. Customer. Now use some judgment. Okay. 
Hi, sis. Oh. oh, it's Geraldine. Hi, Geraldine. Oh, hello, Miss McGee. Hello, Molly. Hi. I just couldn't wait to come in and see your food shop. Yeah. I told Gerald you were opening a food shop, and he said, isn't it wonderful what a little grub can do? Yeah. <laughs> hey, was he calling me a little grub? Oh, Gerald says a darling he thinks, Mr. McGee. He really does, yeah. really. <laughs> I told him you were selling homemade pies, and what do you think he said? <laughs> I don't know, but he better ix nay ackin for it. Gerald said you'd better stick to open face pies because you'd never do any business with the upper crust. Oh, <laughs> wasn't that just too, too brilliant? I mean, wasn't it really? Hey, listen, if Gerald will stop in here sometime, I'll fix him up a nice arsenic sandwich. Oh, <laughs> oh Mr. McGee, you're so cute when you get ruffled. You are, really. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I told Gerald you were so attractive. I mean, your shoulders were so square, and Gerald said you probably forgot to take the coat hanger out of your coat. <laughs> Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell that well, guy. Well, I hope you're just disgustingly successful, Mr. McGee. I mean, I really do, really. Well, I simply have to get back to the house and hear Ted Reams play. That's the plan. That's the plan. So I simply must be off. I'll say so. Diddle, diddle, diddle. <laughs> Hey, you mean to say we've been running a store for hours and hours and you don't know where the cash register is? Well, we haven't had any use for it yet. Well, we will. I got my health food sign up out in front. And look at the chart I just made, showing all the nerves and muscles of the human body. That shows I can point out the different... Oh, how do you do, sir? What can we do for you? Hey, what's that? What's on your mind, Grandpa? Well, I've seen your sign for health food and I want something for my mammy. She don't eat her vittles. Got me worried. <laughs> well, for folks that won't eat, Grandpa, you gotta fix something that's both attractive to the eye and also besides nourishing. Now, look. You take a tomato. She don't like potatoes. Oh, not potatoes, tomatoes. French fried? No, not potatoes. That's fine. She don't like them. Oh. <laughs> Go on, McGee. You take a tomato... And you hollow it out and fill it with prune juice, ground walnuts, soybeans, and a dash of vanilla. And by tomorrow, your mammy will be eating like a horse. <laughs> you darn fool, mammy is a horse. <laughs> mammy is a horse. Oh, so where does he get? Give me a pencil, Molly. What are you going to do? I'm going to figure up the cost prices on this stock. The meat costs are too high. And the bread cost is worrying me. The what? The bread cost. And this bread cost is brought to you by the makers of Johnson's Wax and Glow Coat over the bread network of the National Bread Costing Company. Oh. <laughs> Arpo, what do you want? Say, do you handle cookies? Why, certainly, sir. Well, don't. It isn't sanitary. <laughs> You both. Oh, it's Silly Watson, McGee. Hi, Phil. What's on your mind? You look nervous, Phil. Yeah. What you need is a bland diet, like apricots. 
Now, apricots is full of iron, and you know, and I know, and everybody knows that iron expands in hot weather, giving a feeling of fullness without being stuck. Now, if you take well, an apricot... Well, that's ap- it, please, for Miss McGee. I, I don't want no groceries or nothing. I just come over to see how it's business. <laughs> Well, confidentially, Sil, business is so shaky, we've had to nail down the jelly shelf. Well, is there anything I can do to be of insistence, Mr. McGee, please, sir? Well, you might buy 40 or 50 bucks worth of groceries for that gal of yours, silly. Uh, what's her name again? Rosebud. Oh. <laughs> Rosebud Jackson. <laughs> but she ain't eating food now, so she's on a fluent diet. Uh, you mean a fluid diet, silly? Yes, sir. What I say? You says fluent, Phil, and fluent means with a ready flow of words. Yes, that's Rosebud, all right. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to words, she not only ready, but will it. <laughs> well, why is she on a liquid diet, silly? Is she ill? No, ma'am, but I was walking down the street with little Susie Q. Brown. And Rosebud see her and she get jealous of Susie and they get into a tip. Oh. Oh, a tip, huh? Well, what's that got to do with Rosebud's diet? Well, she was too cheap when Susie gets cooked in the tip. <laughs> well, if there's anything I can do, you leave me alone. Okay. okay. Seven new days, McGee. Can't we sell something? Oh. Hello, Fibber. Hello, Molly. Oh, it's Perry Cobo. Hi, Hello, Perry. Perry. This a health food shop? Yes, Perry. What can we do for you? I've got a serious melody. A serious melody? No, melody. What is it? What is love? Okay, sing it, Perry. <laughs> Make a lamb. Make a lamb, what is it? Chop chop. Hey, what is this? I don't know. What I think that. he wants some lamb chops, McGee. Oh, okay. Two lamb chops. Sure. You clutch on pretty slow, big slot. <laughs> Want you lamb choppy have pants on them? Pants on them? Say, listen, McGee. The man wants lamb chops with them little paper frills on them. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> okay, John. You come back later. Me have choppy panties, dry, clean, and plessy. <laughs> Okay, you make a nice job. Master no likey baggy panty on Lammy Choppy. Okie dokie, John. Imagine that, Molly. <laughs> Next thing, they'll want us to put patent leather shoes on the pig's feet. Yeah. <laughs> or muzzles on the hot dogs. 
Oh. Watch you make a sale to this guy. Hi, bud. Uh, what can I do for you? How about a loaf, a loaf of our health bread? Well, I... Full of vitamins A, B, C, D, F, G, H, and sometimes Y and W. Well... Genuine leather crust bread and a free paper kite with every loaf. Bum bread, but the kites are swell. I don't want a kite. Oh, so you don't want a kite, huh? <laughs> I suppose you're too dead rather dignified to fly a kite. Be a boy again, bud, and let yourself go. Well... Why, with one of these leather crust kites flying overhead, you'll feel the thrill of youth. Your blood will course through your veins like it did when you were in grade school. I never went to grade school. Oh, inferiority complex, huh? <laughs> well, let me tell you something, bud. It gives you a feeling of power. It's dynamic. I tell you, I don't want a kite. <laughs> you hear that, Molly? He don't want a kite. <laughs> Why, where's your sportsmanship, bud? Where's your manhood? Oh, be, you? be quiet, McGee. Now then, what was it you wanted, sir? Well, I just come in. Well, whatever some... it is, we got it, bud. Why, we got some Limburger so strong that it'll walk along beside you and carry the rest of your groceries home. We got some stuff to say. Hey, you carry watermelons? Why, certainly, bud. Well, carry one over Niagara Falls, will you? <laughs> Now you see what you did, McGee? It's what you get when you try to render a little service to the community. Ingratitude. Here we get everything people could eat. There's food for growing kids in them dairy products. There's food for babies in them strained vegetables. And there's food for thought in the fact that Johnson's Wax is a favorite of housewives everywhere. Why is it? Ah, Are you in again, Mr. Wilcox? Yeah, I'm back. Say, hmm. nice food shop you've got here. How's the head cheese? Oh, he's fine, aren't you, McGee? <laughs> What do you want this time, Harpo? Well, look, I wanted to know how you got to be so expert on health food. Well, shucks, Harpo. I wrote a play about food. No. On the order of boy meets girl. What was the name of it? Crab meat salad. <laughs> all right, all right. All... I ever tell you about how Harpo uh, and his foot complaint, Molly? Ever no, tell you about that? You never did. What happened to him? Well, Harpo was complaining all the time about his feet going to sleep. It seems that he was laying around the house all day wearing just the pants of his pajamas, <laughs> and his legs kept thinking it was bedtime. Oh. oh. I'll answer it, McGee. Hello, Wistful Vista Food Shop, Molly McGee speaking. Have we any what? Say it again, please. Once more, please. Just a moment. McGee, have we any cum squat? <laughs> Any what? Come squat. Oh, tell him to hang up and quit kidding. <laughs> Hello? Lay off the double talk, you big lugan. We're busy. <laughs> the idea of bothering honest storekeepers with their practical jokes. Hi, sis. What can we do for you? Well, Skippy, you look like the kind of a man a girl can come to for advice. <laughs> Well, Grandma, I wouldn't be surprised, but ain't you old enough to know your own mind? Now, don't get gay with me, Sonny. Just because I'm a chorus girl don't give you the right to get fresh. You a chorus girl? Well, don't get huffy, Grandma. What kind of advice you want? Well, Shorty, I'm giving my boyfriend a midnight snack in my apartment, and I, I want to know how to make mulligan stew. <laughs> Just sit down on his straw hat. That ought to make mulligan stew the rest of the evening. Say, listen, Sonny, don't be so smart. I want to know how to cook up a dish of mulligan. Oh, a dish of oh, that. Yes, a dish. Well, yes. you take all tomato cans, sis, throw in some ditch water, two onions, a ham bone, a pound of hamburger, some carrots, and cook till ready. But listen, what's the idea of feeding your boyfriend mulligan? That's a tramp's dish. Why, sure it is, Skippy. And he don't know it, but tonight he gets the bum's rush. Whoopee! I'll be a free girl tonight. Woohoo! <laughs> When hearts are young. Take it, Ted, and trill it, Tanner.
That was Elmo Tanner with Ted Weems Orchestra whistling When Hearts Are Young. Now we take pleasure in announcing the winner in last week's trailer contest, sponsored by the makers of Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. Mrs. Floyd Skidmore of Cortez, Colorado, wins the magnificent deluxe covered wagon trailer valued at $1,000. We know you'll enjoy your trailer coach, and we hope you'll protect the finish and keep it sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. Winners of cash prizes will be notified by mail. Dread it, Molly, I wish somebody would ask some advice about the right food to build up their nerves. Here I go and make a swell chart of the human system, and nobody cares anything. Oh, um, how do you do? Are you the proprietor? Oh, you bet you, sis. And for you, I'd recommend the building up diet. You see, you're the cemetery type. Sedentary, me. Yeah, sedentary. Always shutting down. You don't get enough exercise. Now, look at the chart on the wall there, sis. You see how the medulla oblongata nerve twists around the upper ulna? No wonder you have them shooting pains. Uh, but I don't have shooting pains. Oh, well, that's a bad sign. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah. Everybody ought to have shooting pains. Sure. Maybe you ain't got your growth yet. Now, look where I'm pointing on the chart now. You see that muscle that hits the anterior of the tibia on the median line with the ipsy facto? That's what happens when you're short of vitamin W. And look at that repressive uh, maxilla. Please, please, I uh, Maybe wouldn't... she wants some groceries, Miss. Okay, sis. We got the finest line of interior decorations here you ever threw a fang into. Why, we got pretzels here that are tied in a beer lover's knot. We got a baked ham in the icebox that's so swelled up with pride it keeps popping its clothes off. Uh. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I do not wish to buy groceries, nor do I need your advice. Ooh, well, don't be too sure, sis. <laughs> I nearly thought my sister's little Pekingese might have wandered in here. Pekingese? My sister is Mrs. P. Prendergast Pike. P. Oh. Prendergast Pike. Oh, you're looking for Pike's tea. There's a train leaving for Denver. Huh? Oh, McGee, you shouldn't be so impudent with the customers. Well, there's something about being looked at through a pair of glasses on a stick that rings out the primitive in me, Molly. Well, what was it, please? Oh, hi, little girl. Hi. Was there something you wanted? Sure. Fine. Be glad to help you. All right. Well, and then uh, what, what was it you wanted? Your, your mama give you a list? I says, did your mama give you a list of what she wanted? Does she want something, too? <laughs> she dead read it. How do I know? Don't you know what she wanted? Huh? Hmm? Say, I haven't got all day to wait on you, sis. Did your mama send you in for something? No. Oh. <laughs> it was your own idea, huh? <laughs> I suppose you want some candy or gum or something. Me, <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> How much money you got? Sixty-two cents, I betcha. Sixty-two cents? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's a lot of dough for a kid your age to haul around. Oh, I don't haul it around, I betcha. It's home in my bank. Home in your... Dad, read it, sis. If you ain't got any money and your mama don't send you here, what did you want? You, we can't... And what are you staring at me for? I want to see you do your trick. My trick? Mm -hmm. What trick? I betcha you haven't got room in here, I betcha. Uh... Hey, what is this? Room for what? Well, my papa said when you started running this door, you were sticking your neck out a mile. I'll go tell him you can't do it in here. You ain't got enough room, huh? <laughs> well, I'm sticking my neck out a mile, am I? I'll show these bum dunnies, dumb bunnies what I can do. Well, Merchant Prince, what can you do? We haven't sold a nickel's worth all day. And what's that 12 cents you got charged to paid out? A refund on six pop bottles. <laughs> Why, we haven't sold any pop. Why should we take the bottles in and refund on them? Well, there was somebody else in the store at the time, and I wanted to give the impression we were doing a big business. Uh -oh. Well, maybe this one will buy you. Yeah. How do you do, sir? Uh, howdy, folks. Howdy. Are hey, you Mr. McGee? That's me. What can I do for you, sir? We're having a picnic, and I'm on the committee for groceries, and I have orders to deal with you people. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's swell, bud. How many people on the picnic? Oh, in the neighborhood of 300. Oh, Hot dog. 300. Oh, boy. Leave it to me, bud. I'll handle the whole thing for you. Put this down, Molly. Hot dog. Hot dog. Mustard. Pickle lily. Coffee. Fruit. Bun. Steak. Fifty cases of beer. Make it a hundred. Make it a hundred. Oh, this is wonderful. Dozens of pies, cakes, donuts. That's the spirit, young man. Give us the worst. Sardines, pretzels, 
Uh, where will I send it? Oh, you won't have to send it. I have my associates uh, right outside. Oh, oh. Dear. All right, gentlemen, uh, bring in the basket. Oh, boy, oh, 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 boy, pile some more in boxes. We get out the rest. That's the stuff. Here, take another bunch of bananas. That's it. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, have some more olives. Uh, what kind of olives do you want, green or ripe? Ripe. Ripe. Ripe? Ripe. <laughs> Heavenly days, that was fast work. What did I tell you, Molly? When it came, it came all in a bunch. <laughs> Well, you got everything you need now, Bud? Oh, yes, and thanks for the cooperation. Uh, how much will that be? Well, uh, let me figure a minute here. Let's see, four times six, seventeen, the donuts and the beer and the olives and the pastry. Yeah. I'll make you a good price, Bud. Sixteen plus seven is fourteen, the war tax. $189.75. Why, that's excellent. The boys at the City Hall will certainly appreciate this, McGee. City Hall? Ah, uh, this donation of yours is the biggest picnic donation the 44th Ward ever has seen. Oh, heavenly days. Donation. Hey, what do you mean, donation? Anytime you want a favor from the boys, just ask us. We'll be glad to fix the next parking ticket you get. Goodbye. Thank you, folks. Goodbye. Uh... Well, of all the nerve. <laughs> Why, the dirty chiseler walking out and with all our stock and not paying Oh, I'm through. Smearcase can have his old shop. Oh, don't take it so hard, dearie. Oh, shucks. McGee, what are you doing? I'm making this sign to hang on the cash register. A sign on the cash register? Yeah, there it is. There. How does it look? R.I.P. Yeah. What does that mean? Raise in prices? No. Rust in peace. <laughs> Now, this is the final week of the Great Trailer Contest, sponsored by the makers of Johnson's Wax. It's your last chance to win a deluxe covered wagon trailer free. All you have to do is complete this statement. I like Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner because... Now, finish this statement in 50 words or less, telling what you like most about these two fine products that are so easy to use that never scratch the car finish. Why, a statement like this might win. I like Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner because they've saved me many dollars on car washings. Or, Johnson's Wax and Cleaner keep my four-year-old car shining like a mirror. Now remember, this is your last chance. Mail your entry to Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin. And remember to enclose the top from a combination package of Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. This nationwide trailer contest closes Saturday, July 31st. So get busy if you want to win a magnificent covered wagon trailer built by the world's leading specialists in trailer coach construction. Complete contest rules will be found in each package of Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner for sale at your regular Johnson's Wax dealer, auto supply store, garage, or filling station. Now, can you imagine that, Molly? And here I thought the food shop business would be a sink. Heavenly days, I couldn't even collect any old accounts. Did you try? Why, sure. I sent an invoice marked overdue to that Mrs. Court, and I got it right back, refused. Oh, well, you should have known better, Molly. Nobody can put a court bill through these days. Uh, Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax at Racine, Wisconsin, inviting you to be with us again next Monday night at this same time. Good night. Deborah McGee and Molly have come to you over the red network of the National Broadcasting Company. This is WMH.